this room. He hides behind the wealth of the world. But he is about to be uncovered. As a matter of fact, I preached years ago a message entitled, Blowing Satan's Cover. Years ago I preached it. And uh, it's gonna, there's going to be a mass transfer of wealth in the earth. It's prophetic. It's, it's yes. prophesied. And we're coming closer and closer to that time. So anyway, that's not my message, but it's a, a good part of it. Genesis 1 and 28 is not on your page there, but I want to refer to it because in that verse, Genesis 1, 28, God says that he made man, male and female, in his image <coughs> and in his likeness, and that he told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. <coughs> but he also told them to subdue and have dominion. So those five things, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. Five things man was told to do. Now, God has never retracted that. As a matter of fact, when Satan, the power that he has to do what he does in the world today, he didn't do that on his own power. He got it from Adam. That's what he's using. The authority, <coughs> excuse me. Babe, will you bring me some water? Uh, anyway, so he is operating in our authority that he stole from Adam. And Jesus, the last Adam, came, defeated him, and took back that authority. He does not want us to know that. But to subdue and have dominion, thank you, is our command, our mandate from God, not his, to subdue and have dominion. That's only in the earth. That's not in the heavens. But in the earth, man is to subdue and have dominion. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to see with me today <clears throat> is the fact that that is not only what would be good for us to do. It is what God said for us to do. And uh, we have woefully fallen because religion has taught us that we're just an old sinner saved by grace. But if you've been saved by grace, you're not an old sinner. You are un your sins are under the blood, they're gone, and you have nothing to do with sin. Now, you might sin, but you have an advocate with God through Christ Jesus, and therefore, all you have to do is repent, and you haven't lost your place. So what I'm saying to you is that Jesus fixed it so that we could subdue and have dominion. We are not to be the subdued. We are to be the subduers. Evil has no right. Sin has no more dominion over us. Because we are not in Adam anymore. We are in Christ Jesus. Now, in Isaiah chapter 55, and I hope you got something to write with, and I hope you got your glasses and, and your hearing aids and everything you need, something to write with and something to write on, because I want you to go through some scriptures with me, and I want you to understand them at a level of a mature Saint of God. 
All right. Isaiah 55, God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah, verses 10 and 11. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now, I want to break that down, and I have it on your sheet, the breakdown of the meaning of these phrases. He said, like the rain and snow comes down from heaven and returneth not. That means it will not turn back. You ever seen the rain go back up or the snow? It will not be retrieved. In other words, God will not call it back. It won't be retracted. God will no, never say, no, I, I didn't mean that. And it will not be reversed. There's no power on earth that can reverse the word of God. Mm -hmm. No power at all. God's word is the authority of the universe. And so he is giving us an analogy of how the rain and the snow works. Once they begin to fall... You, you, there's no power that's going to stop that. It's not going to retract it. It's not going to reverse it. It's not going to retrieve it and call it back. It won't turn back on its own. It will come to the earth. The next thing that I want to enlarge to you is that when it comes to earth, it waters the earth. That means it saturates, it soaks, it bathes, it marinates the earth. It makes the ground soft and receptive to seed. It's hard to sow seeds in hard pan soil. You got to plow the soil, you got to soften it up. Little little rain fall on it, and it's receptive to seeds. And then it says, it watereth the earth. <coughs> now that word is translated ground. But may I say to you that ground is a term that is used in many different genres. Ground is that into which seed is sown soil but ground is also your heart because Jesus gave the mother of all parables in Matthew, Mark and Luke the parable of the seed and the sower and there were four different kinds of ground that the seed fell into the seed was the word of God the ground was the heart of man the seed is not going to change. It's programmed. <clears throat> it's the heart that is iffy. It's the ground that is iffy. In other words, Jesus points out that there's four different responses by ground to the seed of his word. Hard pan, birds came and ate. Mm -hmm. the, 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 on, on a rock, it couldn't get any depth. It couldn't put down roots. Therefore, it could not grow. Uh, then thorny ground. That means that the thorns and the thistles, which represents the cares of this life, choked out the word and it would not grow. And then fourth, good ground. And even in the good ground, the Bible says some some produce 30-fold, some produce 60-fold, and some produce 100-fold. I want to be a 100-fold Christian. Amen. I want 
the ground of my heart to be so receptive to the word of God, to the seed of heaven, that I produce and I am fruitful. Jesus in John 15 said, I am the vine, you are the branches, my father is the husbandman, and except you abide in me and my words abide in you, you cannot bear fruit without that. So Jesus is the word made flesh. The word must be in us for us to be fruitful. <clears throat> so I've given you analogies here to understand the principle of what God is talking about. His word is irretractable. He does not change his words. <clears throat> his words change things. Things don't change the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Even Paul, when he was in prison, said, I'm in bonds, but the word of God is not bound. So Paul was speaking words and writing letters and sending out the word while he was in bonds, but the word was going out around the world. Mm -hmm. The word of God is not bindable. It is the binder. We need to learn to send our words. He says, well, let's go on. <clears throat> he says, uh, it does not return. It waters the earth. <clears throat> and it makes it, it maketh it. Bring forth, maketh it. My mama used to make me do things. My daddy used to make me do things. The school teacher used to make me do things. Through your life, there are people that make you do things. The bank makes you make your payments. The mortgage company makes you make your payments. Now here's, unless you're, unless you're a, an illegal alien, then you got a free pass. But I'm, I'm sorry, I could not resist that. Please forgive me. <clears throat> Word of God waters the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud. Now, the term there is interesting. It means to midwife. If a midwife is called on the scene of a, a pregnant woman, that baby, it's coming. It's going to come anyway. And nothing, it's gonna, if she's pregnant, she's going to have that baby. Either that or she's going to abort it. But God does not abort his, his babies, his word. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had sinus issues, and that's what I'm dealing with. Makes it bring forth in bud. <clears throat> a midwife brings forth the birthing. That's what the rain and the snow does to the seed of God's word. It produces a pressure on the soil to bring forth and be fruitful and bud. <clears throat> to bring forth, to deliver, to deliver fruitful fruit. Then it says, so shall my word be. Now in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, the Bible says we are born again, not by the will of man, but by the will of God, by the incorruptible seed of his word. Now, here's the catcher. The word seed there in 1 Peter 1 and 23, the incorruptible seed, that word seed is in the Greek word, and it's taken from Latin. It's sperma. Uh, in science, it would be spermatozoa, I would say. But it is human or likened unto human transference of seed from the male to the female planted in the womb to give birth. God did it with Mary and with his word. He got her pregnant by speaking words into her ear gate through an angel, through her ear gates, those words lodged in her spirit and she gave birth. She said, so be it unto me according to thy word. 
She came into agreement and alignment with the Word of God, and she was fruitful. That's what the Word of God does. It bears fruit. <coughs> now, he said it won't return. He said, so shall my word be. It's an incorruptible seed. It is virtually the sperm of God. And I, that sounds sacrilegious, but in order to understand it, you have to see it in the light of reality in, human, in a human framework. Because that's what he's doing. He's likening his word unto natural principles. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you do that, you've got to understand uh, the basics. Now, he goes on here to say, It shall not return unto me void. He didn't say it wouldn't return. Now, uh, earlier he said it won't be retracted and it won't return. That means before it accomplishes it, its purpose. In other words, the rain's not going to turn around and go back up. It's going to come and, and, and impact the earth and do what it's sent to do. So it says, it shall not return unto me, me void. The word void there is translated empty, useless, and unemployed. Unemployed. It's not working. working. Right. It is useless. It is empty. It is void. <clears throat> it will not return to God that way because that's not what it is. Then he says, but it shall accomplish, it shall accomplish that which I please. <clears throat> the word accomplish means to govern to execute, to have charge of, to bring to pass, to produce, to fulfill. <clears throat> when the word comes, it takes charge. Mm -hmm. yeah. It governs. Mm -hmm. You don't govern the word, it governs you. It governs life. It governs the earth. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Because when God came at creation, he spoke his word. He didn't do it with his hand, didn't do it with his feet. He did it with his word. Let there be light. That light still is here. Mm -hmm. Then on the fourth day of creation, he, he put the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. That is still in place because you do not revoke the word of God. It may revoke you, but you will not revoke it. So it does not change. It does not uh, uh, become weakened or, or, or diluted. It grows in strength and power with time, <coughs> if that's possible. Mm -hmm. He said it will accomplish. It will govern. It will execute what I sent it to do. It takes charge. It brings to pass. It will produce and fulfill what I please. Then he goes on to say, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Prosper means to be successful, to be profitable, to succeed. It will prosper. It will blossom. It will bloom. It will grow. It will change things. It will accomplish. Then he says, it will prosper in the thing that I sent it, whereto I sent it. I want you to see that God is a word sender. Mm -hmm. We are created in his image. We are to be fruitful. We are to be uh, multipliers. We are to subdue and have dominion. And all of that takes place with our words, just like God works. That's how we're supposed to work. You see that? Mm -hmm. He said, the thing whereto I sent it. The word send means to sow, to appoint, to plant, to assign, to dispatch. Like a general would dispatch a private to go and fulfill an order. <clears throat> so, God sends his word with a purpose with a designation 
with an assignment and it will accomplish, it will govern, it will take over wherever it comes and it will uh, do what he sent it to do. Yeah. Nothing's going to change it doing what he sent it to do because God's word is supreme. Yeah. It changes government's words. Mm -hmm. It changes the devil's words. It changes anything. It, the Word of God changes everything. It takes charge. It governs. It governs. We don't need to worry about governments. We don't need to worry about uh, 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 man-made things because the Word of God governs. And if we have a governance problem, it's because we have not been working the word like God intends for his people to do. Mm -hmm. We do it in prayer. We do it in life. We speak to things. Stay with me. <coughs> I want to take you to another scripture. Psalms chapter 107 and verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and the Bible goes on to say and delivered them from all their destructions mm -hmm. he sent his word now we know that Jesus is the word of God made flesh so God sent his word in Christ but God sent his word every time he spoke to a prophet when that prophet spoke God's word it had the same authority that was in Mary. It was just not personified, but it was sent to a person who spoke it. Does that make sense to you? Jesus was not designed to be the only word of God in flesh. You are supposed to be that too. The word of God is supposed to be in us. We are not the sinless word from heaven sent to this body but we have been born again by this seed and this seed of God's word abides in us and we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ and we are supposed to act like him Amen. do what he was like his father and we have the same father John 17, look how he prayed over his disciples, and which we're part of, mm -hmm. that they may be one with us as we are one, talking about the Father, mm -hmm. that the world may know. Right. What am I saying? We need to major in the Word of God. Yeah. Major in the Word of God. Not in parachurch ministries. It's good to have those. But the major purpose of the church is to be the foundation and the ground of the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth is the word of God. Yeah. We're about to have a tsunami of truth in this country. Look for it, it's coming. Ain't nothing going to stop it. Can't be stopped. It's just like this description of the rain and the snow. Uh -uh. You can put up your umbrella, but you ain't got an umbrella big enough. <laughs> the Word of God will come to pass. Sometimes because of you and sometimes in spite of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now look. <clears throat> Mark chapter 11 this is a scripture that so many people have stumbled at for centuries. Mark chapter 11, verses 22, 23, and 24. And Jesus said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith 
shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. There's no ifs, there's no maybes, there's no buts. This is absolute. Now let's break it down. Have faith in God. That means have the faith of God. That's how it's translated. Have the faith of God. It means to have the God kind of faith. What kind of faith does God have? When he speaks, he knows his word works. Mm -hmm. He's God. That's the God kind of faith that you have in Christ, in God. You have the same kind of confidence that God will work in and through you the same way his word, like it works in him, like it worked in Jesus, like it worked in Peter, James, and John, and, and the apostles. That you have the authority by God and you have the power of the Holy Ghost to speak with authority and with force and might and strength and expect that your words will produce change like the rain and the snow coming from heaven. It'll make things bud and be fruitful and grow. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a word of rebuke, and then it makes things die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does what it's sent to do. Okay. Amen? Amen? Now, have the God kind of faith. Then he says, verily. Anytime Jesus says verily, and sometimes he says it twice, verily, verily. Mm -hmm. The word verily is the word we get verity from. That means absolute, truly, definitely. No ifs, ands, or buts. Definitely, truly, absolutely, I tell you, I say to you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, now there was a literal mountain that was there where Jesus was talking to those disciples. He said, this mountain. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, I want you to notice he said, said say unto it. Didn't say about it. No. Didn't say theoretically. It says speak to this mountain unto it. Our problem is that we talk about the problems instead of talking to the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, people will think you're crazy if you do. They think you're crazy anyway. Right. Hey, listen. There was a time when I would go down the road talking to the Lord. And people would look at me like I was nuts. This guy's crazy. He's talking to himself. Nowadays, you got Bluetooth. Yeah, they don't know if you're talking to somebody on the phone. So don't worry about looking crazy. <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> crazy for Christ. Yes. You have lost your mind. <laughs> but you have the mind of Christ. That's right. mm -hmm. So, verily I say to you, speak to this mountain. That means speak means tell, bid, command, or call. Call. What did God do? do with Adam. He, he created the animals and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. God didn't tell him what to call them. And he didn't say name them. To, he didn't say to see what he would name them. He said to see what he would call them. Calling. Defining. Identity. And whatever Adam called them, that was their identity. That was their calling. 
It sounded like a name, but the name carried the definition. Now, we live in a world where the enemy is constantly trying to change the vocabulary. Gay doesn't mean gay anymore. It means homosexual. There was a time when you could be gay and happy and carefree. And go. Now, you, you don't even want to use the word because it's associated with something that they changed. They summarily took over that word. They took over the rainbow. Mm -hmm. I sent a little, a little uh, rainbow to uh, somebody the other day, uh, an, an emoji rainbow, because mm -hmm. they had a baby and I was congratulating them and uh, put a little emoji rainbow. And I got the, the, the word back, what's up with the rainbow? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. he's not gay. <laughs> I'm thinking, read Genesis where God made a covenant with Noah. That's right. mm -hmm. Because the rainbow does not belong to the coalition. It belongs to God Almighty. Mm -hmm. It's a covenant symbol. That's right. Yes. So you can't let them hijack your language because words are seeds. Mm -hmm. Words are seeds. Okay, let's go on. <clears throat> am, I, am I still scraping? Uh -oh. What do you want me to do? No. <laughs> How about if I move it over here? Like this. What about that? Okay. Am I doing it now? <laughs> <laughs> My words have power. <laughs> uh, unto the mountain. Not about it. Mm -hmm. Unto it. And shall not doubt. Shall not doubt. The word doubt means to be divided. It means to be hesitant. It means to be wavering. It means to be timid. Tim, timid. You cannot be divided. You cannot be hesitant or timid. You cannot be wavering. You have to mean business when you speak to your mountain. Mm -hmm. Now that was a physical mountain. But mountains come in all shapes and sizes and genres. You can have a mountain of debt. You can have a mountain of trouble. A mountain of disease. A mountain of, 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 uh, of violence. A, you, all kinds. But whatever mountain you are trying to deal with, uh, don't you be iffy. I mean, tell it. Yes. Not, don't just tell it. Don't. Speak to it with authority. Not your authority. God's authority. Because that's what he has designed. You 